Hi friends, uh, today I want to reflect on my art practice. It's been about a year that I've been drawing regularly and just thought it'd be a good time to think about the practice and art and what it's been like. There's a specific thing that I've been chewing on recently about my art practice and how I hold it that I want to reflect on in this video and I think some context about where I'm coming from with my art practice will be really helpful for digesting that thought that I'm having. Hmm. Yeah, I guess my art practice started in Sirius about a year ago, but probably it began when, even before that, when I self-published a book that I wrote, that I hand wrote, um, on my iPad. I bought an iPad for this project and it's basically a memoir and explaining why I started meditating and how I ended up training in a monastery and where my name comes from and that sort of thing. And since it was a personal story, I really wanted to handwrite it and write it by hand and explore that medium. And so I hand wrote it on the iPad with a drawing app and it wasn't procreate at the time. It was this much more jankier app actually called Zoom. It was before Zoom took off as a video conferencing app. It was uh, just like a notes app in iPad that let you draw. And um, yeah, I like hand wrote it and also had some drawings and they're, they're pretty bad drawings uh, and weird color choices, but it sort of looks like my handwriting sort of looks like Comic Sans, but I don't know, but I think the story is very good and uh, I was proud of the project. And I think I had this sense that having an iPad would be really helpful and um, I wanted something like Procreate, although I don't think Procreate existed yet or at least it wasn't widely spread so I didn't know about it at the time. Uh, and then fast forward a few years and I left the monastery again and was out on my pilgrimage. I began my pilgrimage and um, there are sort of a few different influences that made me start drawing and one of them I think was really being attuned to aesthetic sensibilities and um, I think my friend Profesh Kitten on Twitter really inspired me in this way. She's really attuned to beauty in the world and um, the feelings that that generates and there was sort of a transmission that came through in the way that she saw the world and the way that she talked about it and the things that she shared and she gradually started sharing more and more art on her account as well and that was really inspiring to me and I really liked her taste and that she was cultivating her taste and that inspired me and then also um yeah I was also visiting Sylvia in Portugal and Sylvia and I had been collaborating on art and she was uh helping me with my projects and um, I also got to see her draw professionally and make vibe traits and other things that she was working on. And I saw her using Procreate and just kind of spent time around her as she used Procreate and kind of saw how it worked. And I was like, wow, that's actually really simple. And, you know, Procreate kind of looks like Photoshop, but um, it's on the iPad and it's not as overwhelming or scary as Photoshop kind of looks to me or the GIMP or something like that. And a lot of professional artists use Photoshop, but, um, you know, uh, Procreate is just very approachable and it was very intuitive to me and I saw how she was using it and I learned some things just from watching her and I was like, oh, I could try that on my iPad. And she actually borrowed my iPad at one point to make some drawings because um, hers was out of commission or something. And so I had Procreate on there for that reason. And then I started using it myself. And I think one of the first things I actually made was for my friend Booty and Brio Safi on Twitter. And like, there was a meme going around on Twitter of like roast me and like imitate me and so there was this tweet she had written about mulberries where there's some photos of her picking mulberries from her mulberry bush and so I made a drawing of uh, my hands in a similar position with mulberry juice coming out of them and coming out of my face as well I made two different pictures and they were sort of like hers but different and they had yeah just like drew mulberry blood on my face and it was kind of an in-joke but um yeah, and then I, uh, the other big influence, of course, was Visa and his do 100 thing challenge. And I was like, huh, why not make 100 drawings with Procreate? Like, there's no reason not to. I'd, there was no one telling me to, like, please make drawings, Tashin. But I felt moved to, and I had the tools, and I knew that I could. 
So I was like, okay, I'll make a hundred drawings and no expectations, just try it out. And I very intentionally made the first few drawings just like quite poor objectively, like not that attractive. I wanted the bar to be really low. And um, I think this is part of the thing I want to chew on is that um, what it means to hold the bar as low and then still care about beauty with making art. Anyway, that experience ended up being quite a bit more profound and meaningful to me than I expected. I, I didn't know what to expect from making a hundred drawings, but I thought I would get better at drawing and making art that I liked. Um, but I don't know. I think one of the things that I noticed was really reflected to me by Jane. Jane was saying like, oh, I'm really enjoying you, seeing you express yourself in a new medium. And it's like, these are, it's the same Tashin, but a new medium and different things are coming through. And honestly, until that moment, it hadn't really occurred to me that I was expressing myself through the art, but of course I am. We're expressing ourselves all the time through everything that we do, whether or not we're making art. And so my art would also express myself. And then I started to sort of reflect on that consciously and in particular notice like what kinds of things I was drawn to drawing and realized there were certain themes that I like to draw. Um, I like to draw people and especially cute girls, but also like heroes that inspire me or like fictional characters. Um, I like to draw animals and trees and landscapes, you know, natural things. And then I also, another big category is sort of like symbolism and expression and um, sort of crystallizing various insights or ways of seeing that I have into visual art. Um, those seem to be some major themes in my art and um, just sort of leaning into that and intentionally making pieces that are like that. And it's been interesting to watch myself grow and struggle over the last year. I think in certain ways, objectively, I'm like not that great as an artist. Um, um, you know, I, I trace a lot. I use the iPad layers function on Procreate to trace quite a bit. And when I try to draw things by hand, it doesn't look very good. And my sensibilities about color are still not very good. And um, But at the same time, my technical skills are gaining and I learn new things every time I make a drawing. And like, even the like bad drawings that I don't think look very good, um, I still learn a lot from each of them. And there's usually something I'm experimenting with. And there seems to be a pattern of like, Maybe there's like three or four or five or six bad image, bad quote, bad images. And then like one that's like really good. And often the one that's really good is sort of built out of various experiments from the previous ones. Um, yeah, I think uh, most recently I've, you know, did another, I'm doing another round of do a hundred drawings and um, I've been focusing more on cute girls because I wanted to like get better at portraits and it's just fun to draw cute girls and I wanted it to be fun for me. Um, and you know, I asked people on Twitter to share pictures of themselves with me. So a lot of them are people that I know or people that follow me that's shared their pictures. And that's been really fun just having, you know, real photos of real people uh, and watching myself improve over time. and. Um, I've also done some expressive pieces that are more about the symbolism and meaning and trying to convey something and getting better at that. Um, you know, I also watch a lot of videos on YouTube about various things with Procreate or drawing or art, and I like, I like those. Those are helpful. And I also got a course about some art things that I wanted to learn and various other influences have happened where I've like learned about something about art. And that's been really helpful, just learning new technical information. But um, I think I want to hold my art in a very specific way where I want to get better at it. I want to keep going with it over time. And I know that if I do that, I'll get better. And I want to do that consciously where I'm intentionally trying to get better. But I want it to be um, emotionally light and happy for me. I really love drawing. I love how focused I get when I draw and how absorbed I get in what I'm doing. And I really love what I create and how I can have some sense of something I wanna make and then I can make it. And it's just really fun and rewarding for me. And I wanna keep that flavor of it being fun and rewarding and not effortful or uh, stressful. And um, I don't want there to be pressure around it. And so even though I wanna improve my skills and get better over time, I just, 
want to be very okay with whatever art I make and however good or bad it is like I do have aesthetic preferences of like yeah I think this one looks a lot better than the other ones and I tend to put those on my new um, art Instagram account but um, you know I also make ones that I think look kind of bad and that it seems to be part of the learning process and I want to be totally okay with that and even have it be like a, a practice of loving kindness to like love myself like even though I don't think this one looks very good I still learned something from it and I tried and you know it was just still fun to make and that's good and I really don't want to have a sense of like identity where it's like oh I am an artist and therefore my art has to be good or bad like if it's bad then I'm not a real artist and I don't want to get attached to it like I need my art to be good or uh, I think if I if I just have this concept of myself as an artist and I get attached to that then that would lead to suffering and it wouldn't be fun to make art anymore and I don't want that to happen because it's just fun and lighthearted for me. Um, so there's a real like tension there or like polarity between actively wanting to get better, wanting to improve, wanting to keep going with making art and also wanting to hold it lightly and not be attached to it and have it be fun and enjoyable and how to balance both of those real desires. And I think that'll be real a theme throughout my art practice. Um, I think one of the strategies that I've had since the beginning is just like be willing to make something that looks bad and even intentionally do that just to sort of reset the expectations of like, hey, I'm gonna make some stuff that doesn't look as good, but I'm gonna try something new and that's cool. Um, that's worked really well for me so far, just giving myself permission to make something I think is even just like straightforwardly ugly. Um, you know, on the other hand, I also really value this expressive expression aspect of art. And one of my hopes and aspirations would be to be able to illustrate my own art. I had Sylvia illustrate my art for quite a while and recently have moved to illustrating my own art and I that'll be sort of a forcing function for me to get better and better at making art but um, I also just that that's an area where I might have higher standards of like yeah there's this thing I, I, I want to convey through my writing and I want it to be beautiful in words so it should have beautiful art to accompany it and I think that'll be maybe where the where this tension or polarity really comes to a head of uh, yes I want it to be good and can I still hold it lightly and um, be okay with it not being as beautiful as something someone else might make for example. Um, one of the things I've explored so far that I really like and want to explore more of actually is combining digital photography with drawing and illustrations that are made digitally and um, I think that's just an interesting medium and I bet there's more for me to explore there, but I think that looks really visually cool. Like the piece of art that I made for my boundaries piece that had uh, a rainbow that's a real digital photograph that's in the public domain. And then I hand drew something over that to express what I meant by boundaries and the kinds of things I was trying to say in the post. And I think that came together really beautifully, even though it's quite simple. Um, similarly with this image that I made for the Give Your Gift cohort. It has uh, a stock photo of hands being held out. That's a digital photo and then it's combined with an illustration of a background and a heart and some wings and yeah I really like that quite a bit and um, I could see myself exploring that kind of thing more. Um, that seems to be a good way to balance like the different constraints that I have and I think it also just makes for like a very visually interesting medium. Yeah. So overall, it's been really fun. I'm, I'm very pleased with a lot of the pieces of art that I've made and even the ones that I don't like, the process is really enjoyable and I like learning about Procreate and about art and how to visually represent things in my mind. And it's just been a really enjoyable journey and I definitely wanna keep going, especially as long as it sort of remains enjoyable and it doesn't become something that I sort of get attached to and identify with. Like, I don't wanna identify as an artist, even if I get really good because um, I just, yeah, I don't, there's a kind of suffering I could imagine myself having um, that I just want to avoid and not have. And, you know, it's interesting actually, because I don't think I have similar struggles with my writing, but I think that's because at least in my own estimation, I'm quite good at writing and I've done just so much of it over the years, um, even more, far more than I've published, of course. And uh, I don't know. 
I think I can think of myself as a writer and not suffer in the way that I imagine I might. I think probably it's that my skills just match my standards for writing, whereas my skills don't match the standards I would have for visual art if I like held myself to those standards. So I just don't want to hold myself to those standards in a certain way. And, and yet I still want to get better. And so that, that works for me, um, at least so far, and we'll see how it evolves in the future. Um, hmm. It's also been really enjoyable to cultivate my taste of what I like. I've been collecting images in my mind, which is a software tool that is sort of like uses AI to make it easy to search for images and other things. And yeah, I just have like a collection of images that I really like there, whether they're art like the kinds that I'm making or other things. And that keeps me inspired and also gives me a sense of taste and what I like. And um, it's been interesting to notice what I like to collect and what I don't. And that's been a really enjoyable part of the process as well. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just been a really wonderful year so far and I could see myself doing it for many years to come and uh, we'll see what actually happens, of course. Don't wanna force myself to do anything, but uh, I'm enjoying it so far and uh, it's nice to reflect on what it's been like and to share that with you. So thanks for watching.